Now, the cover feature of the latest edition of Nature, that's the world's leading science journal, features the results of a wide-ranging analysis of the genetic history of Africa. The Human Hereditary and Health Consortium uh, studied the genes of 426 individuals from 13 African countries with ancestries spanning at least 50 ethnic and language groups. Now, the results reveal previously unknown historic patterns and migration events, giving researchers a glimpse into Africa's genetic history and clues on environmental adaptation. Now, this research will be used to tackle modern-day health challenges, including, of course, COVID-19 as well. To explain what it all means, we're joined now by, by co-leader of that study. That's Professor Zene Lombard, uh, who is also Associate Professor at Wits University's Department of Human Genetics and lead scientist at the National Health Laboratory Service. That's quite a title. Uh, Professor, good morning. Thanks very much for your time this morning on the AM report. So it's quite a, a complicated issue we're going to be discussing now, and I think for the benefit of me mostly and perhaps some of our viewers as well, I'm going to ask you to speak quite plainly. So as a start, welcome to the show. Uh, I'm told by this research pack that I have in front of me here that in fact African populations have not been as extensively involved in genome studies as other global populations. Why is that and why do the study now? Absolutely. So um, we know that Africa is the cradle of humankind, but less than 20 percent of the genomic research that has been done globally has been done in Africa and on African populations. So there's so much more to learn. I think there are several reasons for this. Um, previous um, lack of infrastructure, expertise on the continent, et cetera, some of the issues that we've experienced. But through um, initiatives like the Atria Africa Consortium, there is this drive to build capacity in Africa to do this kind of large scale research. Now, in the introduction, um, I was talking about, uh, you know, 426 individuals, 13 African countries spanning at least 50 ethnic and language groups. Is, is this really just the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to unpacking the history of the African genome? Absolutely, you get it right on the head. So, um, yes, we did focus specifically on um, ethno-linguistic groups that have never before been studied um, from a genomic perspective. But we know that there are more than 2,000 ethno-linguistic groups um, represented in Africa. So focusing on these 50 groups that we did in this study is really just scratching the surface. And there's much more that we can learn. And break it down for us. What does this study tell us? And why is it so detailed? I suppose it goes back to, you know, the various colonies on the African continent. We've got influences in the African genome, surely, then, from around the world. Um, yes. So, as I said, Africa is, is the birthplace of humankind. So, really, the diversity um, that we see on the African continent across all the different populations is tremendous. So one of the, the main things that we saw was just um, surveying the genomes of just a couple of hundred individuals in this study, we already discovered three million new genetic variants that we never knew about before in, from looking at the thousands of individuals in, in, in other studies. So um, yes, I think there is a lot to learn. And I think it is also important for us to, to use these genomic clues that we get to learn about African history, about migration history, and this information is also important when we start thinking about precision medicine for all populations, including African populations. So, so Professor, break it down for us. That, that particular issue that you've just mentioned there, when it comes to addressing particular illnesses on the African continent, why is this kind of study so important? Um, so when I speak about precision medicine, this is where we want to use individual genetic information as well as information about the individual's environment, diet, etc., and pull that information together to inform health and to make um, decisions about disease. Um, it's really important that we have a representative data set of all global populations. And if we want to use this new technology in, in Africa, we s certainly also need to have African reference data as part of our knowledge base. I'm also seeing here, Professor, that um, the study did find variations on these unstudied populations. 
So these three million previously undescribed variants, tell us more about that. So these would be variants that in all the other genomic studies that we've done globally in other populations, we've never come across these new variants. It just gives us a glimpse that we can learn so much more by including a more diverse base of population groups when we do these kinds of genomic studies, and especially African populations, because we know that the diversity in Africa is tremendous. Um, so it, it really gives us a, a reason to try and include more of the ethnolinguistic groups and more African um, cohorts in, in genomics research as we go forward. Yeah. And I mean, the big question, of course, is how this kind of research could help us tackle the COVID-19 pandemic on the continent? So I think already there are basically two ways I think that this can be used. So I think the, um, the infrastructure that has been put in place on the continent um, for this kind of research that we did previously can now be repurposed and reused in different settings. So for instance, a lot of the infrastructure is being used for COVID testing and for sequencing the virus. Um, and, and secondly, we can use this diversity information to start asking questions about susceptibility to infection and also resistance and protection against infection in different human populations. So um, definitely there's huge potential for this kind of information to be used. And if we bring that, I mean, we've been talking broadly about the African continent, but we've, if we bring the uh, relevance of or the importance rather of a study like this here in South Africa, what would you say those main points are? Um, I, I think, again, South Africa, again, is, is one of the focus points, one of the countries in Africa. Huge diversity in the population groups that we have in the country and a lot of potential to, to learn more about our genomics and to use that information to improve the health of our local populations. But I think also an important aspect is for African researchers to have the opportunity to do these kinds of research and to um, have the opportunity to learn how to do this at a large scale in Africa and to drive our own research agenda um, from the African continent. Absolutely. Well, Professor, thanks very much for taking the time to explain to us, give us more insight into what this study means for us. Professor Zane Lombard is Associate Professor in the Department of Human Genetics at Wits University. That's just one part of her very long title. Important story that how can our genetic history give us insight into how we could be responding to phenomenon like COVID-19?